Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways, another morning coffee chat. So, in the first one of these, I talked a lot about marinas and problems with the northern neck of Virginia and how a lot of marinas just don't really have the, have the well, the marina concept to them. And you know it's regional. There's lots of different places, different, different places have different cultures, different rules. Like if you go to a marina on a lake, it might be a completely different world from a place on a ocean coast where people do regular sailing or cruising. You know, I, <clears throat> I once lived in, you know, I've lived in Marina del Rey. I've lived in San Diego Bay. I have visited Ventura and I've lived in Seattle. Well, not Seattle, Anacortes, but the marinas up there. And they have a very different feel from what's here. You know, in San Diego, there is, was, is a certain, um, how do you describe it? <clears throat> there's, there's always something against liveaboards. It's a, it's a weird thing. It's not normal. It's not how normal people do their lives. And so there's always a little bit of, um, resistance or suspicion or something but it's well well known out there that a certain number of liveaboards helps keeps your docks safe so if you've got that five or ten percent then people's boats don't sink you know crime goes down not up because you've got people there at the marina all the time and storms happen and events happen and random fires break out you know lithium batteries explode you, you really want people around and you know it doesn't happen every month it doesn't happen every week something is guaranteed to happen every year and so stuff happens liveaboards are there it gets dealt with it's it's but at the same time liveaboards tend to be um d depending depending on exactly what kind of marina and boat and economic situation you're dealing with good morning crane Look at you. Hi. That's one of our friends. He likes to hang out. And there's a pair of them, so I think it's male and female, but they like to hang out and fish here. We have oyster traps and crab traps, or oyster farms and crab traps in the marina. <clears throat> of course, these are larger marinas. These are, these are larger marina areas. There are... Oof, a dozen marinas down in Mission Bay alone, like they're just blocks and blocks of marinas. And it supports a, a culture and an economy. Now, of course, there's different economic factors with liveaboards. You've got people who live aboard, quote unquote, um, $800,000 <clears> yachts, and they're not generally restricted or questioned as much as people who live aboard $10,000 sailboats or $2,000 sailboats, you know, or $8,000 Carver 32 powerboats. So you've got these differences, and, and the differences are very important, very perceptively important. Side note, I love how this camera angle makes me look very um, pyramidal and bald, which is kind of crazy because I... Do not suffer from any hair loss issues. You know, I just have my my high ponytail for the morning. I love cameras. They, they do such weird things to perception. The Command to Look. It's a book. You should read it. Um, so, you know, moving up, Marina Del Rey, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a kind of an up and a down. Depends on who's running the particular subset. Marina Del Rey is... Again, a dozen marinas in one marina, one, one basin, you know. And there's a lot of sailing in San Diego or Marina del Rey. There's a lot of weekend sailing. There's Wednesday races. There's, there's races all the time. Um, there's trips to Catalina, the island. You know, there's, there's stuff. It's not a very good place to cruise. It's not a very good place to, to adventure from. You can basically go to Catalina and that's it from either San Diego or Marina del Rey. Um, you know, you can risk the Ventura Harbor entrance 
which is pretty bad for a burger at a at a actual you know seaside cafe but there's no dinghy docks there's no there's no places where you anchor and you take your dinghy in and you go have a coffee or a beer or oysters or anything it's not <clears throat> it's not like that it's more like that when you get up to seattle but it's not like that down south so the the only i think there's one or two spots on the shore um in san diego one or two spots where you could tie up a dinghy maybe three and then there's a public municipal dock for day use for dinghies and launches on cattle on coronado island on the north end and that's it like that's all there is in the entirety of san diego bay and that's a little weird that's that's a little that's a little weird um not a lot of boat culture just people aren't going out on boats and doing stuff and that's that's very strange there's more of that in the northeast especially as you get north of well here you know out of the potomac into the bay the north bay where the people are like annapolis you know people go out and have coffee at coffee shops that are literally floating boats you know, stuff like that happens. Um, and then going north from there, you have pizzerias with docks and, and stuff in Connecticut. Rhode Island, <clears throat> all the way up into Maine. <clears throat> so you've got culture for that. You have some of that in the ba in the Chesapeake Bay. You definitely have some. More than, obviously, California. Um, I think that it's just, it's weird being on the northern neck, being in this very outlying rural space prices are great and if you pick the right marina this marina is fantastic they're very supportive of people using their boats sleeping on the boats when you're when you're out doing your stuff pulling the boats in and out working on the boats like there's there are limits you know there are things you can't do on your boat in the water there are things you can't do on your boat in terms of just you, you can't strip all of the gel coat and blow all of the fibers everywhere. You know, there's limits, but you can do quite a lot. And there's no, there's, there's nothing against it. There's no culture against it like there are at other marinas. Um, I mentioned Cone with, the, with the, the crazy Italian guy who doesn't want people to, to stay past 5 p.m. <clears throat> Day use only for your sailboats. And of course, he, you can't run a business that way. So he's kind of forced into allowing people to spend a night a week on their boat. Um, I mentioned Kinsale, which is, again, Kinsale's a fantastic potential little marina. And the clubhouse is nice, and the pool is nice, and the, the docks are not terribly nice. Um, you know, they, they still they exist. The docks themselves are pretty solid. The fingers are largely questionable and uh, the, the electricity connections are highly questionable and you know there's that whole whole mid to, mid 20s to early 30s trust fund hippie um techno capitalist kind of attitude that doesn't you know it just doesn't doesn't really um doesn't really equate to how boats work they're not vw jettas and that's kind of the problem so but for example this marina or a couple others in the area where you have you're very close to the potomac and you have a you're very close to the southern part of the bay and you're also on the water if i had if i, if I lived south of significantly south of dc like if i lived near quantico or on the shore near that 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 whole um, southern county area, just south of DC on the Potomac, is all I'm going to say. And I had a powerboat, and I was pretty comfortable with you know popping that thing up to 30 miles an hour, which you know a launch, a small launch with with, and I, I was okay with the fuel cost. It would probably actually be cheaper in the end to keep a 40-foot powerboat, a 42-foot sailboat, even a 34-foot powerboat or sailboat here and use the launch to get to it. 
than it would be to keep it in a slip in Annapolis. And that's kind of a crazy thing to think about, but you know, if you're if you are 15 or 20 minutes from a place where you can use your motor launch, you can keep it in the water, you can keep it on a trailer, you can keep it at a lift or something. They're um, much cheaper to store. Coming down here and having something that's only a couple hundred dollars a month for a slip might, you know, that would be fun. That would be fun if you're one of the people who comes out and visits your boat once a month or one one weekend a month or two weekends a month. You know, driving driving a boat down instead of spending three hours in traffic sounds kind of fun, actually. Of course, then you question, you know, you end up with a small boat and you question a lot of things. Hello, puppy. I have a puppy. And um, that would that would be quite quite the uh, kick there. I have to let the puppy go. If I keep talking, he won't go back to the boat. So that's that's that that's mar you know marina stuff. Other things to look at with marinas when you when you're doing a live aboard. Um, there's the culture, of course, and you may or may not be able to choose that. You're going to have to adapt. There's also concepts of um, facilities. So depending on the boat you're on, you may or may not have a head that you want to use every day. Um, you know, sometimes your head goes into a holding tank. You know, your, your poop has to go somewhere, and it doesn't go into the water. This isn't the 60s. So... Um, you probably have a holding tank. You may, if you're in the, the right place, have a holding tank and a sanitizer, an electric processor. Uh, the electric processor basically cooks your poop and then allows you to put it overboard when you're using your boat, which isn't a great thing to do when you're on the boat at a dock because it just kind of keeps building up. You don't want to do this. Um, even if fish do eat it, there's just, there's limited water flow in your marina, I promise. So, holding tank, um, composting, so-called composting heads, they're not really composting. They're just dry toilets with, with covers and they, they desiccate the poop. You know, either the, your, your liquids, your urine goes into a separate container and has to be processed separately. And how people deal with that, I won't say on YouTube because, you know, there's there's rules about that and no one follows the rules. Um, you know, you have to you have to deal with that. And largely, even if you take your boat out fairly often, pumping out is a chore. Uh, there are busier marinas, busier areas will have pump out boats. The poop patrol comes and does pump outs. Um, little boat comes. $15, $20, whatever, and they pump out your pump out. That's really cool. And if I had that option here, I would be less concerned about switching to a composting head, a dry, a dry head. Um, Going to switch to a dry head anyway. But, you know, your facilities matter because you don't want to use your toilet exclusively if you can avoid it. You know, there's just, it's a lot of... You, you don't want your systems to sit and rot, but at the same time, there's living aboard is different, and a lot of these systems are built for weekend use. So, you know, consider that. Showers are another thing. Showers will um, have an impact on your boat, especially if you're on an older sailboat with a wet head where the whole bathroom gets wet if you want to take a shower, or only a cockpit shower, which means you have to stand up in front of everybody to shower. Um, you know, you have different different technologies on your boat. Many power boats have a reasonable shower system. And, you know, that just goes overboard or into your bilge and then overboard. That's gray water in most places. People just, it goes out. So you need to consider that as well. Um, the marina will have, <clears throat> most likely will have toilets and showers. And you should probably check the condition, safety, usability of those because they could have an impact on your quality of life. I like taking showers on shore because I don't have to watch the water. I don't have to worry about running out of water. I don't have to worry about running out of hot water. And on our sailboat right now, I am very much, very adamant about 
manual pumps for water, no pressure water. So we don't have a pressure water shower. We do have a shower system, but it's not pressurized. Um, foot pumps and solar heat and stuff. So, so something to consider. Laundry is another thing to consider. Big, big thing to consider about your marina environment if you're a liveaboard is how you're gonna clean, clean your clothes. And you can do it by hand. It's not a. It's not a problem. Five gallon bucket and a plunger. Look it up online. You just you, you use low sudsing stuff. It takes ten minutes to do a load. It takes ten minutes to rinse a load, and you just hang it up and you're done. If you don't have a lot of clothes, and you're not crazy about five outfits a day, you can probably survive. But you you really want washers and dryers at the marina. Um, then after that, you want access to stuff off the boat as much as you love your boat as much as you never want to leave your boat as much as you want to go sail into the sunset every day you need groceries you're going to need the library you're going to need to go to a park you're going to need to go hiking you're going to need to do stuff off the boat and part of the point of living on a boat is that you can do all of that stuff you're not trapped in a house now the truth is you're going to spend 95 percent of your time, 98 percent of your time, 99 and a half percent of your time docked. Uh, whether it's whether you're at anchor or in a marina, if you're in a marina live aboard, you're not going to get out as much as you think you are. Even if you take the boat out twice a week, you're not going to go out and go for a four day adventure twice a week because that's eight days. You know, there's there's you're, you're going to need the stuff around the marina. That's the only problem with the marina we're at right now. 15 miles to a grocery store and that's about it you know if you, you 45 minutes if you want anything besides a grocery store so you know it's a little limited that way it would be less limited if we did have a motor launch because there's stuff on the bay um it would still be 45 minutes but it's just kind of different it's a different access so Something to consider. There's also seasonal anchoring where you go and you anchor out during certain parts of the year at local anchorages and use your dinghy, you know, and you're closer to mass transit or whatever. So that those are things to consider. But your marina is going to have compromises. It's going to have choices. It's going to have a lot of stuff that you have to consider and you're just going to have to live with it. You know, there's there's no better or worse aside from, you know, you don't, you don't want to have a meth lab next to you. And you don't want to have stuff that is so, so run down that you literally falling apart. There's a, there's a place up north of us where half of the docks are not safe to walk on, but all of the boats are abandoned. And it's kind of, you know, there's, there's some boats there I would really love to rescue, but I have, you know, I only have so many boats I can rescue. I'm holding out for the one behind me. It's a uh, Aloha 8, 8.5 whatever the 28 foot got renamed in metric it's the second version so it has all opening hatches and diesel heater inside and and it's big but small and that would make and you know shoal draft everything it's it would make a handy east coast cruiser um very very fun to rescue if, if it was possible um right now it's just growing lichen and it's kind of bad seaweed coming out of the scuppers also bad so that's about it. We're going to talk more about marinas as the coffee shop series or as the Cub Morning Coffee series goes on. I think I have a lot to say and it's all going to be rambling and you probably don't, you know, a lot of it's stuff you're not going to want to know unless you're considering living aboard a boat. I'm going to give you one message. I'm going to try to make this a cons consistent message through every one of these overly long rambling videos. You have permission to do this. Whether you have $500 or $50,000, you can go do this. Guaranteed that you can go do this. I can. You, you can find a free boat. You can find a $50,000 sail away boat that will have just as many projects on it as the free boat. Um, you can do this and you have permission. You're just gonna have to live with how it works. And that's going to be different for every person. All right, stay sideways, enjoy your coffee.